Your turn, Marcus. What are you going to get them to make? It looks very much like a cheesecake. It is a cheesecake. It's a banoffee cheesecake with some caramelised bananas and some biscuit toppings. How long have they got for this? I'm going to give them 15 minutes. I would love to see a posh cheesecake in 15 minutes. Are you just about to? <laughs> I'm going to be making two different caramels. They've both got the sugar, the butter, one's got cream and rum, and the other's got a banana liqueur. One caramel is for the bananas. And the other caramel is going to go into the cheesecake to give it that banoffee flavour. So we've got them going at this pretty much the same time. There's no water in there, it's just dry pan. Marcus is making a dry caramel. For me, it's one of the safest ones you can use because you can stir it if need be. Why can't you stir a wet caramel? Uh, you stir a wet caramel, you can actually cause it to crystallise. They need to be very close eye on this because at this stage, if it goes too far, it's just going to be black caramel. It'll be too bitter. A splash of the banana liqueur. Just drop our bananas into there. As soon as the bananas have gone in, you just shake them around, you make sure the bananas are all loose, and then you just tip them out onto a tray. So the bananas are not overcooked, they've still got a little bit of texture to them, but while they're sitting there in the caramel, they're just gently just cooking away. OK, our second caramel is coming up. Just let the pan do the work for you. I can start to see the colour now coming through. Cream. Finish with some rum. So you should take it out of the pan into your bowl of ice. I don't need to rush this because it just needs to cool. The minute it's cooled, we can get the process underway and start making the dessert. Now we're going to make our cream cheese. OK, so I've just very, very, very lightly just whipped the cream. Here I've got the cream cheese. I'm just breaking it down, just softening it so that it's at the right consistency so you can incorporate the cream. Just gently fold that in. Now I'm just going to just swap these over and transfer this onto the ice. Can I feel this? Just want to... Oh, right, that's cold. Mm. Right, fine. So the, the most important thing now is making sure that you keep everything nice and cold. If it starts to come to room temperature, I don't want it to run through my piping bag. I want to create layers. That's not a million miles away in consistency compared to what it's about to go into. So this is where it turns into the banoffee cheesecake. If they don't cool that caramel down, that's just going to cook the cream, isn't it? Absolutely. It's just going to become a sauce. We put that into our piping bag now. And then we are ready to assemble our dessert. Yeah. So there we have our two biscuits. So that's our sort of base and our topping. A few little digestive biscuits. You just want it to work its way around just by tapping the bottom of the glass. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm bringing it all down, but I'm also creating a layer now for the banana. And now for the ginger biscuit. Finish with a little bit of chopped rosemary. Nutmeg on the top. So there we have it. Banoffee cheesecake with caramelised bananas. Not off. That is great, really wonderful. I mean, this is an amazing dessert. I'd be super impressed if our chefs are going to come in here. We're near this. Let's get the chefs in and see what they create. This, this could be fun. I hope so. <laughs> First up is 25-year-old senior sous chef, Joe, from Winchester. If you want to be the best and you want to be considered one of the best, you've got to put yourself against the best and come out on top. Being in a high-pressure environment is in my history and my past has definitely squeezed the best out of me. That's where you really separate the men from the boys. Who handles it, who doesn't, how do they handle it and to what level. I definitely have a competitive streak and I try and not let that step over the line into arrogance, but as a chef that's pretty hard. <laughs> yes, I'm competitive, but that's only because I want to push myself. 15 minutes, off you go, Joe. Done pastry before, Joe? A little bit. It's not my most frequent section, but I've uh, been lucky enough to have a spattering of it everywhere I've been. You've had five minutes, Joe. You've got ten minutes left. Thank you.
You're halfway, Joe. So seven and a half minutes left. I think you've got plenty of time. Thank you. How did that go? I think it's going to taste good. I'm not entirely happy with the presentation. I could have done a bit more of that, I think. The reason why it looks that way is because you're building it while it's still warm. Everything's sort of turning to a big mush. But at the end, it's going to be always about the eating. Joe, it's a very sickly, buttery glass of mush, and it's warm you needed to cool things down a little bit more before you started to build this together. And I think the bananas have started to break down the cream cheese. It's not great on the eating. All I can say is you need to really think through what you're doing and don't run at it, you know, so step back and pace yourself. Looking forward to cooking your own food? Certainly looking forward to it more than ever now after hearing that, so I've got a lot to prove. Very nice to meet you. See you Thank in the you. next round. Thank you. Off you go. Love his energy. Just needs to be more, a little bit more controlled, doesn't it? Yeah. I rushed it, made a few rookie mistakes that if I could go and do it again now, wouldn't have happened. I don't disagree with their critique. I'm only annoyed with myself. I'll pick myself up. What are you doing in that pack? Basically, I just want to make a bit of a sauce to go on top. Listen, you've got two minutes. Two minutes? No you've problem. You've got to start thinking about plating it up. No problem. Two minutes, we're going to come right now. I would love to see a chef who knows how to fill it any flat fish or any round fish. I think it's a fundamental, very important part of our training. The chefs do have to be careful uh, because it does have a ridge bone down the middle and if they're not careful, you could go straight across and then cut through the lovely fillets. I'm going to take the skin off. If they want to score the skin and cook it as a whole, that's entirely up to them. It's the butter that's going to add an amazing amount of flavour because it's just that nut brown butter that we look for in our cookery. Turn that fish over. Yeah. And we just baste away. Yeah, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful sight. Just a little bit of the polenta. That's just lovely. There we have it, guys. Pan fried John Dory, polenta, and pesto. Lovely. Very, very lovely. It's got Greg Wallace written all over it. <laughs> Extraordinary. Mm. That polenta is wild. Aniseed tarragon, and a little bit of salt from Parmesan, and then, of course, the bottom base of saffron. That is wild. Good polenta cookery, good fish cookery, and a lovely, vibrant flavour of the pesto. Lovely green. It's no. about great techniques, great cookery, and that's what we want to see on the plate. First up is Kamal, who currently works in a five-star London hotel. Kamal, I would like you to fill it and prepare the John Dory. OK. And I'd like you to cook and serve it with polenta mm -hmm. and a basil dressing. And a basil dressing. Okay, okay. You've got 15 minutes. Off you go. Thank you. Come on. Have you done much work with fish at all? I've done a, a few bits and pieces with fish. Yeah, the first time with John Burry, though, I have okay. to say. You're halfway. Well, you've got seven minutes left. OK. What's the dream? One day to hopefully be in the, uh, the position of you guys, to be honest. What, you mean I'm losing my job here? Get a few more years under my belt, but maybe one day. <laughs> I think you're doing well. He's got a beard, he's got a bald head. <laughs> <laughs> so get yourself a pair of glasses, mate. You're on your way.
What are you doing in that pan? Basically, I just want to make a bit of a sauce to go on top. Listen, you've got two minutes. Two minutes? No You've problem. got to start thinking about plating it up. No problem. Two minutes is going to come right now. Done? OK. Yes, done. Finished. Thank you. I thought that was a very cool, calm, together skills test. Thank you. The filleting of the fish, you don't cut that John Dory through the middle. You take yeah. the whole fillet off. Mm -hmm. Nice looking plate. It's lovely. I think that's very good. I'm not even going to go and try and pick little holes of this, 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 this. I think it's an excellent piece of work. Thank you. Yeah, that's lovely. That's fine. That's a really well-cooked piece of fish and lovely flavours of basil and saffron in a creamy polenta. Well done. Thank you. I like the way you worked. You kept it nice and tidy. Uh, you have a great attitude about you as well. And I think it's a great way to walk into this kitchen and start. So you just layer pieces of lamb. That's a packed sandwich. Proper sandwich. Mm. Put it on. Right. And that's got your name written all over it, Greg. That's a bit of me, that is, Chef. Marcus, this is your turn. What are you going to get the chefs to make? This is a test with a little bit of difference to it. I'm going to ask our chefs to cook a hot lamb sandwich and serve it with a pea mint salsa. Yes. So we have got here a neck end of lamb. First skill is the butchery. The rest really is open to interpretation. At the end of the day, what I'm asking them to make is a, is a lamb sandwich, but I want to see a little bit of imagination. They should assess the, the piece of meat they have to work with, and that is the key mm. starting point. How long? 15 minutes. <laughs> Off we go. What I'm doing is I'm taking the eye of the meat off the bone. We don't need this flat for this dish. We just look for the eye of the meat. I don't know whether our chefs will come across uh, lamb neck before. It's not a popular joint. Now, I haven't had lamb neck in a restaurant for about 10 years. I want to retain a little bit of this fat because, for me, there's a, there's a huge amount of flavour running through the meat here as well. But it has a, a really good, good meaty lamb flavour. So it's good at this point for the chef just to look for that little bit of maybe too much sinew. So just by knocking it out, I'm just going to very, very lightly flour the lamb. So garlic, a nice sprig of rosemary, sprigs of thyme. I'll meet in the pan. Just get a nice bit of colour on the meat. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to deglaze with a little bit of malt vinegar. And then our lamb sauce. So lift our lamb out. The sauce is still reducing down. Fewer things in life please me as much as brown lamb. And take the sauce. Straight over the top. So just leave that sitting nicely resting. And it's not going to be undercooked because this cut of meat will be too chewy. You need to take it more to pink to well done rather than rare. I'm just going to use this rustic white bread. Olive oil. So just massage the oil with some garlic, so you get a little hint of garlic just coming through the bread. So now, we go on to our pea salsa. Mint and pea salsa, that's where they get to play. Great food, doesn't have to be complicated. So I'm just chopping a little shallot, chilli, and I've got some frozen peas. If we were going to make a pea puree in a restaurant or a pea soup, I guarantee that most of the top chefs would probably use frozen peas. They just have a better flavour, a, a, a sweetness to them. I'm going to sprinkle our mint in there. They want that lovely aroma of mint sauce, and that's why I'm adding malt vinegar. These are classic, time-honoured British flavours. That's right. Lamb and mint and pea. And now we can start to bring our lamb sandwich together. So we just layer pieces of lamb. That's a packed sandwich. Proper sandwich. Mm. 
It's on. Right. And that's got your name written all over it, Greg. That's a bit of me, that is, Chef. So there we have it. A hot lamb sandwich with a pea and mint salsa. Fabulous. Why are you two not talking? Really happy right now, so just stop talking to me. Make another one.